Coming up, doing the work of a dog six times his size. This Bouvier de Flandre herds emus. And preventing crime in the Barcelona Metro. Peekaboo only weighs nine pounds. Good. Peek starts his day by helping his owner, Debbie Davis, make the bed. Nine years ago, Debbie lost both legs to a vascular disease. She couldn't manage without Peek. Little dogs can do so much. I mean, we I think we have a stereotype of little dogs, toy breed dogs, being yip yakers and, and ankle biters and out of control and very spoiled. Yet really, they're just big dogs in, in a little package. Good, thank you. Peaky's a papillon. Uh, the breed, the word papillon means butterfly in French because of the big butterfly wing-shaped ears. And this is a companion breed. They've been companions to human beings for, for hundreds of years. Debbie has three papillons. Every day they go for a run. Peek is nine and doesn't see as well as he used to. So Debbie has started training Cappy, his replacement. All right, and open. Open the door. Debbie's vascular disease Good. makes her Thank dizzy you. if she bends over. Peek opens and closes doors for her. Push. Oh. And drawers. He helps with the laundry. Good, thank you and picks up things that Debbie drops. Good, thank you. I really like a little dog because he's just out of the way, on the floor, and people aren't tripping over him when they're getting on the airplane, and in a restaurant, he's under the table, out of the way, and nobody's stepping on his tail. They don't even know he's there unless I drop a piece of silverware or my money or the bill or something, and I have to send him out to, to go fetch it for me. Excuse me, second. Peekaboo, would you fetch that for me, please? Thank you. Okay. Come settle. Thank you, babe. Typically, service dogs tend to be large breeds, like golden retrievers, labs, or dogs like Lala, who belongs to Debbie's friend Rita. Despite his tiny size, Peek is one of the top service dogs in North America. He's the first toy breed to win the prestigious Delta Society's National Service Dog Award. Peek initially had behavior problems, and traditional training just made them worse. Then Debbie discovered the clicker method. Clicker training teaches dogs to think creatively. Debbie has one game she calls 101 Things to Do with a Box. It trains Peek in problem solving. Debbie encourages Peek to keep trying different approaches tapping, pushing, and tilting the box until eventually he does what Debbie wants him to do, turn the box Yay! upside down. There he did it, all right! Way to go, Peek! Debbie also uses a target stick with the clicker to train Peek to move around her. Instead of using hands, instead of using food to lure a dog in position, you just use the target stick. And the target stick, the dog follows the target with his nose, just like he was magnetized to it. Different types of targets allow Debbie to train Peek Go to on. focus on her and ignore there, distractions. Nice. See what I did? I held off. I didn't want to click him for touching it with his nose. He, I wanted him to whack it with his paw. Go whack it. Oh, do it again. Yes! All right. When he chooses the one that I want him to do, then I click at the exact moment he's doing it, and then I follow up with a treat. And that click is like a camera's click that isolates a moment in time and tells him, yes, good boy, this is right. 
It's just the fact that he's interacting with something to keep him focused on me instead of traffic or, you know, distractions or other dogs or other people around. It's just part of service dog training. Good. Go touch. Yay! Anything that can come out of nowhere is distraction training. Let's say I'm at the bus stop, and from a block away, I hear a man hollering, hold that bus, and I see a man running towards us, shaking a, a closed umbrella. Well, I know that that's not a threat, but the dog can be perceiving it very differently, and maybe there's something to worry about. So what I have to do when I'm teaching service dogs is to train them to expect the unexpected and all sorts of distractions and not to be frightened of them. Debbie mentors dog owners around the world on her training methods. Peak is her inspiration. When we go to the mall, Peaky, oh, first thing he does is open up the power door. When we get to the door, he sits in my wheelchair and he jumps up and he presses the power door opener so we can open the door and get in. Okay, touch. Right Although Debbie could push this button herself, yes, thank you. doing so would go against Peak's training. Okay, good, huff. And leash. Thank you. And finished. Let's go. Mostly he's just with me at my side in case I drop things. Packages, my keys, money, um, my gloves, my hat. So he picks things up a lot for me. He, he's an ambassador for service dogs. <laughs> he loves to greet people. This is peekaboo. Yay! See? Would you like to see him do a trick? Oh, all right, what do we have him do? Pick something up? How about that? Okay, peekaboo. Fetch a clicker. Very good. Yes. That's it. Yeah. And how about if we have him speak? Shall we have him say hello? Speak. Good. How about touch? High five, yes. High five, yes. All right, and fetch your leash. Way to go. How about if we have him dance? Would you like to see him dance? Come on, peekaboo. Let's dance. Ready? Yay! And down. And sit. Good. Peek and I have to go out every single day somewhere. We have to get out and just not work all the time, get a chance to just be ourselves. And this is such a beautiful, natural place to come. And we love it. Just the peak loves the birds. And I love to see all different cacti and what's blooming. We come here often. Peek is a working dog, so most of the time he's busy working in the malls or working out on the sidewalks or in the house for me. This gives them a chance to be dog and to love nature and just get a chance to enjoy life. Peek and I love to be together. Peek is my butler, my maid, my sidekick, and my best friend. <laughs> Aren't you, Peek? Life on the farm. <laughs> Canaan, a Bouvier de Flandre, is the top dog at Freehaven Farm. This eclectic livestock farm is also the largest emu farm in South Carolina. Canaan and his dog pals help their owner, Karen Wilson, run the place and keep things under control. Let's go feed him. Come on. Let's go feed him. 
I've got 10 dogs on the farm, but Kanan's the main one. He's the alpha dog. I chose Kanan. He's my right arm man. He helps me out on the farm with all the animals. Whenever I'm feeding, if I leave the horses, when I feed the horses, if I open the stall doors, he's there to keep the horses in if I don't make it back in time. When I go out to feed the goats, the same thing with them. He keeps the animals where they're supposed to be. The Bouvier de Flandre is a cattle herding breed that originated in Belgium. This powerful dog has a muscular physique and a large head. Its wide muzzle sports a distinctive mustache and beard. There's about close to 200 animals on the farm, 13 different species now, and Canaan is top dog. He's top of whatever species is out here without being aggressive. What differentiates Bouviers from other herding breeds is their gentleness. They move slowly so they don't scare the animals they're working with. One of Canaan's jobs is to round up the barnyard animals to be fed. He keeps a keen eye on the miniature horses and llamas while Karen does a head count. Canaan makes sure no one's missing. Turkeys. <laughs> Pygmy goats and their kids, llamas, all present and accounted for. On a farm, there's always something to do, period. So as far as working him, he's with me, whether it's feeding, whether it's hauling water, whether it's hauling hay, there's always something to do on a farm. He's relaxed doing it. Now, he gets excited when we get to go out and chase something. That's when he really gets happy, because he gets to get into his element then. Karen got Canaan six years ago as a pup. She specifically wanted a herding dog who could work with emus. One of the last things a Bouvier will do to get an animal's attention is to bite, and that's specifically where I wanted this breed over some of the other herding breeds. I didn't want healers, I didn't want anything nipping or making the animal move. I wanted them just to bump them and work them slow. Easy. Because their necks are so fragile, it's important not to get the birds overexcited. An out of control emu is clumsy and can fall or run into something and break its neck. The booths work totally different from any of the other herding breeds, which would be the border collies or the uh, healers, because they use their size alone to be recognized and intimidate the animal, whether it's a cow or you'll see them out here with the emus. His size alone, they're going to notice. So if he walks up to them and blocks their path, he's got something large in the way. He does not have to bite them to turn them. Both Canaan and Karen have to be careful around the emus. The birds aren't normally aggressive, but if they're cornered, they get defensive and kick out. It's rare for a bird to kick at Karen, but if that happens, Kanan will protect her by pulling the bird down and immobilizing it. Good dog. When that happens, that's when the risk for Kanan comes in. Their legs are extremely powerful, their toenails are sharp, and if that should happen, there's a rare chance that Kanan will get a bruise or an injury from that. Good dog. Stay. All right. Every so often, an emu gets spooked and takes off at a run. For Kanan, it's an excuse to chase. With his speed and size, it really is a help with the emus. You want them working slow, but if one takes off, these emus can run 30 miles an hour. Kanan can pretty much keep with them and run beyond them and bring them back to me. Easy. Easy. Bouviers are very affectionate and crave lots of physical contact with their owners. Kanan has his mama well trained. When he gives me the super sad look, he melts me. Whenever I'm in the pasture, if he sits and stands, he's not content to sit beside me. He wants to lean on me or sit on my foot or something like that. You know, he loves the contact, and it is reassuring to him and to his mom. Kanan is also the chief guard dog on the farm. He makes sure the livestock doesn't become prey for wild animals. BVAs are excellent livestock guardians as, guardians as well as herding dogs. I've had a problem with coyotes here because of the subdivisions moving in, whether it's a stray dog from the neighbors or coyotes, anything that comes into the property, Canaan's after it, and so are the other BVAs. I had a miniature horse and several emu taken out. Since I've had Canaan, I've had no other problems with any dogs on the property or with coyotes or you know anything else on the property. He's, he's keeping everything else away. At night, Kanan guards the house. He's on the front porch, 
the other Bouviers are at the barn. Um, if anybody pulls up that I don't recognize, he will definitely give a warning bark. Anything that comes up, whether it's animal or human, you know, they're, all the booths are alert to that. It's laying season for the emus. For Canaan and Wicket, a Jack Russell Terrier, that means egg hunting season. Go find. When you've got four acres and a lot of leaves on the ground, you need something to hunt for you. And I send Canaan out here. He usually scatters the property pretty quick, and he can uncover the eggs for me. And I'm usually right behind him picking them up as we go through the woods. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. All right, let's go. Let's find some more. The birds will choose wherever they decide to lay. The female lays the egg, the male will cover it up, and after he has about five or six eggs sitting here, the male will start actually setting. The female has nothing whatsoever to do for the rest of that chick's life. The male sits on the nest for 50 something days, hatches them, and takes care of the chicks. Good boy, Canaan. You got some eggs? Karen will incubate the eggs and sell the chicks. Come on, let's go. Come on. At the end of his long day, Kanan gets a favorite treat, a chicken egg. Okay, good stuff. One thing about a Bouvier, when they're eating an egg, they're gonna wear it. So this really does get messy and he doesn't mind getting it groomed and brushed every now and then. I've had this farm for 15 years. I've had Canaan for six. He has made my life much easier on the farm. He's made it much fuller just because he's with me all the time. He's a member of the family. He's the best buddy I could possibly get. And if there's such a thing with a four-legged soulmate, I've got one in him. Barcelona, on Spain's Mediterranean coast, is a popular tourist destination. It's famous for its stunning Gaudi architecture. The Barcelona metro system transports one and a half million people around the city every day. Willy, a black German shepherd, and his handler, Eduardo Quijano, are part of the Barcelona metro's Brigadas Caninas, or dog brigades. They work at the Plaza Catalunya station, the busy hub of the entire system. Their job is to enforce security and prevent crime. Willie's working conditions are stressful. Willie has to adapt to noise from the trains and noise from the passengers. A lot of people pass through here. There are all kinds of smells. There's also the long stay underground every day, day after day. The dog has to adapt to all that. Like many large urban centers, Barcelona has a high crime rate. Despite high-tech surveillance, crime in the metro has been hard to control. The Brigadas Caninas were introduced seven years ago as a means to reduce crime in the metro. It's worked. There's been a significant drop in crime, and surveys show that passengers feel safer knowing the dogs are there. Eduardo and Willy have been partners for a couple of years. They patrol the station for eight hours a day, five days a week. Part of Willy's job is to make sure travelers pay their fare. Willie's background is a, a bit unusual. First of all, Willie was born in Germany. He was trained for explosives and drug searches by the German police, but he didn't have all the qualities required for that kind of work, so he came here to Barcelona to work as a security dog in the metro. But because of his original training, he has a more developed sense of smell than the average German Shepherd. Willie's memory for smells is exceptional too. He can recognize the scent of someone he's apprehended up to several months after the encounter. Although Eduardo may not recognize the person, he's learned to trust Willie. 
Willie makes an ideal Brigadas Canina's dog. He's big, and he's got the right temperament and personality. Willie has some innate qualities that already make him a good dog. He is a very intelligent dog. He's the kind of dog who can anticipate things even before they happen. He can sense when a person is about to assault and when someone might be about to commit a crime. And those are the qualities that make him work better than other dogs. Jose Flusha trains all the dogs for the Brigadas Caninas. Willie is the most well-balanced dog there can be in the canine world. He's a black German shepherd, and because of his color, right off the bat, he commands respect. Willie can have a run-in with a criminal one minute, and the next minute, if you know how to treat him, he can play with children. And that's very important for a guard dog working in security. Eduardo keeps Willie healthy and happy by making sure he gets fresh air and exercise after his long shifts. I've been working with dogs for four years. This is the third dog I've had. The other two dogs were too old and they had to retire. Willie and I are very close. I'd like to adopt him when he retires. I hope one day I can keep him for myself and, and take him out of the service and just enjoy his company. As a pet, I wouldn't trade him for any other animal. Mm.